After decades of closures and downsizing, thanks to the likes of Amazon and Barnes & Noble, independent bookstores are now having a moment of growth over the past few years. And so has the culture of reading, thanks in part to hashtag BookTok and Bookstagram. Now joining me now to dig into all of this is GBH News Associate Producer for Arts and Life, Haley Lerner. Hi, Haley. Hi, how are you? Good. So we were talking a little, a little bit off camera about how... You know, so many folks are into reading, yeah. you know, at, le at least ac according to my social media feed, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, everyone's reading in a way that I feel like it's very different than before. Yeah. You see people posting about books, you see people sharing about books. I feel like I, it's a common conversation topic that I have with other people more than I really ever did. Do you think it's a holdover from the pandemic at all? I absolutely think it is. Mm -hmm. That's when I got back into my love of reading and many other people did. I think people needed ways to fill the time and books were there and they stuck along, which is great. We were talking about, you know, local independent bookstores. They're really having a moment. Talk to me a little bit about that because we've heard so many stories about Barnes and Noble and others just really pushing them out. Yeah, local bookstores have boomed in the Boston area. There's been so many different stores opening. Existing stores have opened up secondary locations. There's really been a boom and a space in the market that's been being, being filled. Do you think that, you know, some of this social media stuff is driving folks or is it just people just are falling in love with books again? I think social media helps. I think some stores, you know, go viral online because they have beautiful designs. There's a Beacon Hill Books and Cafe. I know that gained a lot of traction online. There's just... People want to get their books and they like the experience of reading them in person and having a physical copy. And so these stores you know, are getting more customers. And I think the online part does help. And, of course, these stores offer so many great services to readers that I think they have people coming back and back again to get those great recommendations. We actually went out to Porter Square Books and we said, hey, let's talk to some folks who are out in the bookstore this morning. And here's what they had to say. I think maybe post-pandemic, people are still looking for yeah, an escape and some entertainment. Um, I think, too, social media and TikTok are playing a big role. And, like, we had so many people coming in here saying they saw it talked about on TikTok and they had to get it. <laughs> the tangible aspect is really nice. Um, this bookstore is my happy place. So the days that I work from home, I just come by and um, it's just a nice break. There's just like a community aspect I really like about coming to this bookstore that I wouldn't find going on Amazon or even to some of the bigger box retail stores. The variety is greater in um, more of different kinds of things, less drug story kinds of things, less airport books. I think that it's really important also to support local yeah. small businesses and the publishing industry that is suffering so much now. That's true. And, you know, I've actually been in Porter Square Books. They do a good job of really sort of honing into what their readers are into at the moment. And I imagine that's super important when we're talking about this resurgence. Yeah, local bookstores have very specific books picked out. I think they have an idea of what their readers like. Often at my local independent bookstore, I see books that are made by indie publishers. Publishers, They're not necessarily, you know, the main books that are being put out in airports, as that one person said. And so because of this, you're getting books that you normally wouldn't be exposed to in another setting. Do you think, like, sort of in-store events also sort of drive some of that? Like, if it's a local author, of course, you've always had author talks, but it seems like there's in-store events that are also happening. Well, absolutely. I think authors are becoming celebrities in their own they right. Really are, yeah. yeah, people want to go and meet that author. They want to get a signing. And if you go to local bookstores, they have so many events. Every day, almost every day of the week, you can go meet a new author. And when I talk to local bookstore owners, that, that's what they're most focused on. One of the things is just making sure that they have authors come in and people have the chance to meet with and talk with other people who love those books. I imagine as you talk to these bookstore owners, it might also come a little bit as a surprise that they have been able to fight back against Amazon and, you know, Barnes & Noble, these large giants in the in that space. Yeah, I mean, the Barnes & Noble in the Prudential Center did close. Mm -hmm. Harvard Bookstore was supposed to fill that spot. They just announced that they're no longer going to be filling that spot and they're not going to be expanded. But all the local bookstores are sticking around. And I think that really says something about what customers want and what people care about. 
Do you think it's a demographic thing too, like like bookstores that are situated in places like around Harvard or where younger people are, or even in, in populations like around learning centers and things like that? Does that make a difference at all? You think? I mean, I'm Boston's a city of learning, and so I'm sure people love to read here. And I think. There's now stores in all different types of locations that cater to different demographics. You know, there's all she wrote in Somerville, which c caters to feminist and queer books. And so I think they really are stores that are catered towards the area around them and the needs of the people that want to read there. So let's get into my favorite topic, which is romance. Yes, and my favorite too. <laughs> yes, um, really, I, th I feel like romance books uh, are there. They used to be the thing that you bought in the in the grocery store, or, you know, kind of like you didn't tell people about, or you only read on vacation. But now there's a real community around all different types of uh, romance novels. Yeah, exactly. Romance books before were really like, oh, you're reading a romance book. That's not a real book, and that's completely the opposite. And it was never true. And it's especially, I think, seen as romance books are real reading, they really get people into reading if you weren't before. And there's a huge community, especially online, of people that love these books and appreciate them. And now the front shelves of a bookstore are gonna have the romance selection. It's not just gonna be you know, grocery store aisles. Do you think that also romance authors are starting to think more about other audiences that maybe they didn't tap into? I know a lot of times, you know, this probably predates you, but like Fabio on the cover for women and things like that, whereas they're trying to expand it to more audiences. Yeah, for one, book covers look totally different than they used yeah. to. You know, you go in a store, romance books have cartoony type covers. They look a lot reader friendly, um, which is a marketing decision. But mm -hmm. books are also really trying to represent more voices, more perspectives. You know, they care about having LGBTQ characters and relationships in these romance books. You know, having people of color as the main focus instead of just all white leaves. There's really a focus on putting out more books that can represent more people. And I think that makes romance more approachable. I've definitely noticed that like there, you also see different body types in yeah. these books now, which is a big deal where you wouldn't think it would be. Yeah, it's, it's something that just seeing yourself reflected on that cover at time, I think could really make a reader want to read something when normally if you're not seen in a book, why do you want to read about love if you, it doesn't feel like something that you could have if it's what that's what's on the shelves? Speaking of romances, which I guess arguably the Outlander series is a romance or historical fiction, depending on what you want to call it. Like, do you think when books are adapted into TV, it also feeds into this, uh, you know, wanting to read more for the general public? I think it definitely does. I think, you know, when books are on TV, people want to read them. There's a lot of books that I've read after seeing the movie. Sometimes I know people like reading the book before the movie, but I think there's a lot of fun in seeing a movie and then reading the book and seeing the differences. But I think books just have really kind of made the mainstream. If you look at a lot of the TV shows that are coming out right now, they're based on books. So where do you see this going? Do you think that this trend is going to continue where independent small bookstores are actually going to still be able to keep a foothold in the market? From what I've talked to with local bookstore owners, they say things are going strong, sales mm -hmm. are good, and you know there's always troubles that come with being a business owner, but right now they're very optimistic. They're having a lot of great feedback, a lot of people coming to their stores, and that's always great to hear. All right, we'll be uh, watching out for your reporting. Haley, thank you so much for being with us. Thanks so much.